I admit it. I took the cleanliness of the water in my home, the oil in my car, and the air quality in my town for granted. I also never thought about how chemicals had anything to do with the cost or the performance of my phone. That changed immediately on my first day in the microelectronics industry. I saw a microscopic image of a blob of contamination, thousands of the width of a human hair, that caused havoc in the manufacturing of our electronic device components, or chips. A polymer filter was the solution these chemicals needed to create effective circuit patterns. The history of liquid filtration comes from the technology developed out of necessity, as you'll see in this video. It's transformed our lives in profound ways. This story will be told by Vinay Goel, one of the contamination control industry pioneers. I have the privilege to see the influence he has on the development of new technologies and to inspire our teammates. We can listen to his career stories for hours. I hope you enjoy this story as much as we do. The most uh, commonly accepted definition of a membrane, it's a very thin selective barrier. It, what that means is that it allows certain species to go through while keeping other species out. Uh, we've had uh, some very sophisticated membranes in nature forever, really. Uh, for example, our skin is a very sophisticated membrane. Our kidneys are membranes that are continuously purifying our blood. Natural membranes have been around forever, as I mentioned. But synthetic membranes have only been around for the last 100 years. If you can think of 100 years as only a short amount of time, but really in the overall scheme of things, they've only been around for about 100 years. So the very first documented patent on synthetic membranes was awarded to two, two German scientists, uh, Zygmondi and Bachmann. They came up with a process by which they dissolved polymers in some, some volatile solvent, and then they evaporated the solvents, exchanging the solvents with humid air uh, to, in a, using a dry process to create microporous membranes made out of uh, cellulosic polymers. What I heard was that, that the first application of these membranes was in, during World War II, where the water supplies were uh, contaminated with microorganisms. So these membranes were actually uh, commercially used by a company called Sartorius to remove these microorganisms from, from, from drinking water. Now, uh, the, after World War II, this technology was repatriated to the US, by the US government, and a contract was awarded to a company in Watertown, Massachusetts, not too far away from here, called uh, Lavelle Chemical Company. There was a scientist who worked at Lavelle Chemical Company whose name was Jack Bush. Jack Bush saw the real potential of this technology and decided to license it from the government and founded Millipore Filter Company in 1954. Okay, So Millipore Filter Company later on changed its name to Millipore Corporation, but they actually had they were producing these, uh, these mixed ester, nitrocellulose, cellulose acetate, mixed ester membranes on a, on, 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 a, on a commercial scale. The very first application that they sold these membranes for was water microbiology. So before then, uh, when people wanted to, to actually count bacteria in water or in any other fluid, they used to actually plate the organisms on other plates and then they would incubate these agar plates and it would take about a week before these microorganisms would grow into colonies and then you could count colonies. What this technology enabled, so this is really an, an, an enabling technology that changed, was, was a real inflection point, that you could actually filter the sample using these microporous uh, nitrocellulose membranes and all of the bacteria would be collected on the surface of the membrane. Then, if you then expose the membrane to a nutrient on the bottom, because these membranes are microporous, by capillary action, the nutrients would travel into the microorganisms where you would still have to incubate, but only for 24 hours. So the next day you could come and then you could actually count uh, the colonies. So instead of having to wait a week, you could actually uh, count bacteria in about a day. Now this is the very first application, but Millipore in those days was this very young, energetic, innovative company and wasn't just satisfied with one simple application. So they actually were very good at finding many, 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 many applications uh, for these membranes. 
So after that came, actually, they said, geez, you know, if you can collect these bacteria and count them, could we maybe remove bacteria from liquids, for example, actually sterilize these liquids? And so that was the next kind of obvious application. They did have to tweak and, and, and reduce the pore size uh, to make sure that they were actually making a very reliable sterilizing membrane. And so the next, uh, the next product that they commercialized was actually a sterilizing uh, filter which then became kind of the standard in the pharmaceutical industry to sterilize a lot of, of uh, species that were sort of heat sensitive, that you could not autoclave, but you could actually uh, cold sterilize using membrane. So, and then of course expanded into many other filtration applications, including by the way, the one that's near and dear to our heart is semiconductors. So semiconductor industry is a highly specialized uh, in an application space where um, there are specific chemicals used and specific gases and, and et cetera. And, and so the polymers used uh, to make membranes for semiconductor applications really are polymers that are compatible with these, with these chemicals. So the most, the, the most common polymers used are PTFE, which is the most inert uh, polymer. It's a Teflon, family of the Teflon uh, polymers. Uh, it can withstand almost any of the aggressive chemicals. The second one I would say is UPE. By the way, UPE is, is an acronym. It's a shortened acronym. The, the full acronym would be, you know, it's a U ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. So it's a long acronym. Uh, it was shortened to UPE in the old days at, at, at Millipore. Uh, so the second one I would say is UPE. The third one is nylon, very commonly used also, uh, very similar to, uh, to UPE. And lastly, more recently, polysulfones, polysulfone, polyether sulfone, et cetera. I'd say pretty much almost all of the, at least the liquid filtration applications are served by these four membranes. Whether we needed safe water for soldiers, effective medicines, or electronics to help us find that elusive dining spot across town, the cleanliness that matters is possible thanks in part to a polymer filter. As we're nearly at the scale of cleaning molecules in semiconductor manufacturing, where will these innovations take us in the next 100 years? Imagine all the other applications that we rely upon for clean materials, medicine, water, air, energy, even food and beverages. These applications for pure materials are endless, and the work of pioneers like Vinay continue to open new possibilities. Thank you for spending the time with us.